So when I was in high school, I would often hear people say, John, high school and college is the happiest and most peaceful moments of your life. And I can't agree more. I'm not sure if I completely agree with that for college, but man, high school was the best period of my life. Because looking back, my high school was filled with fun and happy moments of studying for the SAT for six months and not seeing any improvements. And the cherry on the top was sometimes my score just dipped. But unfortunately, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. One day, I was super super stressed with the SAT and I made one poor decision of using this. And next thing you know, my score actually started going up and I ended up with an 800. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you what happened in the hopes of you making better choices and not wasting time as I did back in high school. All right, guys, before we get started, I want to give you a quick shout out to Jimmy, who was a inspiration to this video. Jimmy was one of the students inside the accelerator. He was a junior stuck in the 500s, but a couple months later, he fixed all the problems, got a 700 plus on the math section, and now he's having a terrible time in college. If it's your first time here, my name is John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 10 years, and my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, 600 range to 700 plus by their next SAT. Now, we're going to talk about the poor choice I made back in high school school, but you kind of have to understand what's going on with Jimmy because Jimmy went through the exact same set of problems. So Jimmy was in the 500s. He signed up for the accelerator and he went through the whole program from A to Z. He learned all the 25 concepts. He went through the concept summaries, speed training, concept checklist. He did the whole nine yards. And then he took a practice exam and he was like, my score didn't go up at all. So he sent me a quick message on Discord and said, John, I did everything you told me to do and my score is not going up. Like what's going on here? And I just told him, Jimmy, relax. Maybe college is not for you. Maybe you're not smart enough. All right, guys, listen, if you're the type of person to watch SAT videos on YouTube, you can definitely hit 700 plus on the math section. It's super easy. So I told Jimmy, hey, it's going to be OK. Let's figure out what's going on. And I'm going to make sure you get to 700 plus. The first thing I did was I showed him this question right here. It's a relatively simple question, something you would often see on the SAT. And I told him, OK, Jimmy, when you see this question, what goes in your head and how would you go about solving this question? And Jimmy said, OK, so we're working with a quadratic function and the question is asking for you to find out the product of the roots. And it's really simple. The product of the roots can be found using the formula negative C over A. You pop it in. Boom, there's your answer right there. And I told Jimmy, nice job, man let's finish it up. And he's like, okay, cool. So he plugged in C, which is going to be nine and then negative nine over A, which is going to be one. So our answer is going to be negative nine. The product of the roots is going to be negative nine. Our answer is going to be choice A. So I asked Jimmy, all right, Jimmy, scale from one to 10, 10 being the best. How confident are you with this answer? And Jimmy was like, man, I'm all warmed up. Give me something harder, John. And I told Jimmy, hey, man, this is exactly what the problem is. You see, if you've been studying for the SAT for a while, you know that the product of the roots formula is actually just a C over a and not minus C over A. And the thing about the SAT is that even if you do 99% of the work correctly, if you mess up on the 1%, it's going to cost you that point. And one thing about College Board is that whether you like them or you hate them, College Board is really good at their job. They're really good at making these exams. Because if you look at the question, they knew that students are going to make this mistake of getting confused on the product formula. Was it C over A or minus C over A? Well, the thing is, there's a minus in the sum formula. Sum of the roots is going to be minus B over A, but the product of the roots is going to be just C over A. And because the College Board notes that most of the students are going to have 90% understanding of the concept, but they're going to be shaky on that 10% of the concepts. Even if they know most of it, they are still going to mess up on one part of it and they are going to make a mistake. And essentially, they're betting on the fact that you are going to be clumsy. And it's not a coincidence that the most common wrong answer is going to show up as choice A. Because what's going to happen is when you mess up and get the wrong answer, you're going to see choice A and realize that, oh, my answer is actually in the answer choice, which is a good sign. So I'm pretty sure it answers A. Let's move on to the next question. And next thing you know, you got that question wrong and you got a 430 on the math section. And some of you guys might be thinking, how can you get confused on minus C over A versus C over A? There's no way. That's just stupid. Well, I'm pretty sure unless you're getting 750 plus consistently, there are at least some concepts where you think you know it, but you actually don't know it. So don't be too quick to make judgments on other people. So what this means is if you study the SAT math book from cover to cover and you feel like you know everything, but your score is not actually going up, chances are you probably know most of it, but you probably know nothing. That 10% that you're missing right now, that's what's causing all the trouble. And this is what College Board knows about. And this is something I learned after in years and years of tutoring. But 99% of the students who are scoring less than 700 do not know that they are having this issue. So there are many ways to go about and tackle this issue. But one of the most efficient ways I found to do it is by using this. 
Terrible choice, I know, but here's how it works. You see, whenever you're studying for the SAT, you're probably working with like a very, very thick book. There's a lot of information in that book. And the thing is that there are parts of that book, you just simply need to read it, understand it once and just move on. But there is that 5% of that book where you have to really drill it into your head so that you will never get confused and it's just with you for life. In other words, if somebody wakes you up at three in the morning and slap you in the face and ask you what is the product of the roots formula, you should be able to say it immediately. So here's how you cure that problem. You know the book that you're working with right now, whatever you're studying with, get a separate journal. And then in that journal, write down all the important, important stuff that you really, really need to internalize and drill into your head. And then every other day or so, just look at this journal and make sure you know everything in this journal because this is the collection of all the things you need to know. If you know what is in here, you're good. You're gonna be set on the SAT. But if you don't know something that's in here, you're gonna get screwed over on the exam. And so some of you guys might say, John, I don't need to do that. I can just memorize it by looking at it. But listen, if you look at chapter one, when you're going through chapter one, chapter one stuff is probably fresh in your head. But by the time you get to chapter 24, chapter one stuff is not going to be so fresh in your head. That's why it's important for you to keep it in the journal and constantly review it throughout your preparation process so that all the important stuff stays in your head, regardless of how long you have done it for. If it's something that can make the student's life easier and make it more efficient and save time, we put it in there. Concept summaries, my students, sometimes they don't have time to come up with these journals like that. So instead we give them a sheet of everything they need to know for that specific concept. And we do that for every single 25 concepts. And next thing you know, you just need to know what is in there. So essentially, if you studied for the SAT and you feel like you know most of the stuff, but if your score's not going up, chances are that you're missing that 10%. And SAT knows that you are going to be lacking on that 10% and they're gonna take advantage of it. So the main takeaway is the college board knows exactly what your weakness is. And if you want any chance of getting your target score and make sure everything is drilled down into your head, you using the summaries or using this red journal. If you can do that, you're gonna have no problem hitting your target score.